what would you say is one of the first steps you give people in reclaiming their direction? Number one thing is this. Watch. <sighs> Seriously. Having people just be um, my, my grandfather, um, who, is, who became a, a, an amazing spiritual mentor when I was anything less than spiritual. He would just say, keep digging, keep digging. But he, he taught me as, this process. And anytime I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed or anxious, anx anxiety starting to pop up or whatever, because I'm human, that stuff, you know, it pops yeah. up you know, again. He says, breathe. And then he would use the term, be still. I know that I am God. Hmm. Be still, just be still for a moment. Now, whether someone shares my faith level or not, or they, they have a different faith level, that's, that's irrelevant. The, the principle here is if you're constantly on a, uh, a, tread, a, tread, a tread wheel, a tread wheel, gosh. Treadmill? Treadmill, yeah. A treadmill. <laughs> if you're constantly on a treadmill or some kind of rat race or whatever, you know, the rat, rat wheel. I try to merge the words together. Um, <laughs> if you're constantly on those things and you're not taking time to have any level of rest, you're not going to have any level of clarity. Um. As someone who's very committed, very diligent, very work life driven, I'm, I'm to me work. I'm I'm a self described workaholic. Like I, I like to get crap done. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That being said, every every amazing vision, everything that came came from universe, God, whatever you want to call it, came from asking. Mm -hmm. But asking in a point of not when I'm under duress and not when I'm under pressure and not when I'm freaking out and not when the world's falling at my head. That's not what I'm asking the questions. That stuff may be happening, but being where I am now, now I, I try to get myself centered. I grab a pencil and a pad and I'd say, what, what are some things I'm good at? Okay. Good at, well, I'm good at speaking. Okay. What are some things I go, well, other people say I'm really good. I talk in fortune cookie, which means apparently I drop wisdom without knowing I'm dropping wisdom. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I'm good. I'm good with people. Okay. Well, I'm good with, uh, I'm good. Well, it looks like I'm okay with business. I could probably, I could probably strengthen that some. And I just start making lists of the things that come natural and easy to me. And then when I get done with that list, I call, I call someone or text someone or connect with someone who knows me well enough to show me and tell me the areas I don't know about myself, the good and the bad and the ugly. But I asked them, what is something that comes natural to me that I have no idea is difficult for other people? Because certain things in our, in our tactical strengths and our gifts and our talents, so much of that is stuff that we do every day, not thinking about it, which is why we're not leveraging it to begin with, because we don't know it exists. You know, so if, if I'm trying to get to the, the next level, if you will, I'm going to spend time in being still, I'm going to spend time being quiet and I'm going to spend time asking great questions of myself. In fact, one of the most pivotal questions that I ever asked myself that actually became my first book uh, a number of years ago, um, I was on a treadmill, an actual treadmill, not a, not a rat wheel, but a treadmill. <laughs> yeah. And I was going at it and I, was, I had just come through a massive season. I had, I had, I had built a, at the time a $15 million business. I had 25 team members. I, I had, I had, the, I had a sports car in the garage. I had a nice house. I had my company vehicle. I could travel. I could go and do, um, most of my company was, and myself were more or less out of debt. I had a little bit here or there, but it was, wasn't a lot, you know, stuff I could write a check for and pay off or whatever. Right. And yet I was empty and I would be in my closet. This is where I do my meditating and prayers. It's, it's just something I do. It's just, it's my quiet place. No one can bother me. Right. <clears throat> I was in there and I was like, I don't understand. I don't understand. And I wouldn't be asking this, this question. Help me understand. Please give me wisdom. Help me understand. Give me wisdom. Give me perspective. Show me, show me, show me, show me. And then one day I'm on a treadmill and I'm at the gym and I pull out my iPhone at the time, iPhone 4S at the time, pull that joker out. And I write these words. What does it take to change the essence of a man? And then right below it, what does it take to change the essence of Stephen? You see, in that moment, I knew I wasn't a great leader but I had no idea how to become a great leader. Well, once I began to say, well, what does it take to change the essence of the man that I am? I was able to articulate the things that I wanted to change, which I'd never really kind of spent the time to really kind of like look at. Right. And then I just said, okay, well, what, what's the opposite? What's the polar opposite? So if, if I'm a man who, who um, gets very defensive or doesn't listen very well, well, that's not who I want to be. Well, what's the opposite? Well, the opposite is someone who is a great listener. 
Well, how do they do that? Well, they allow mm. other people to speak first. And they always speak last. So what's the principle behind that? You have two ears and one mouth for a reason, <laughs> right? I'm serious. I mean, it's, we True. make life mastery so stinking complex and it's so much easier than we allow it to be because we are so focused on the adversity or whatever we're feeling in the moment. And you have to be able to step outside of the emotion and yeah. step into some, some mental, mental acuity, mental process. And the easiest way there is to be still, be reflective and ask great questions. And if you can do those things, you're going to get better answers. And just like our good friend, Tony would say, you're going to get better results, right? Yeah. There's a reason why some of us say some of the same stuff in different ways. It's because it's backed up by a principle that always delivers a promise of fulfillment yeah. every time, time and time again. So that would be my advice.